I've been a truck driver for over 30 years now, delivering goods all across the nation. I've seen a lot out on those long, lonely highways, but I didn't find the experience I had last month. It started off like any other day. I was scheduled to drive a truckload of industrial equipment from Chicago to Denver. It was a routine route, one I'd done countless times before, usually a boring, uneventful drive along empty rural roads and sleepy small towns, but not on this trip. I woke up early that morning, well rested and ready to hit the road. I loaded up the trailer with heavy machinery, double checked my manifests, fueled up, and headed out, right on schedule. The first few hours flew by uneventfully as I cruised along the interstate out of Chicago. Around midday, I exited towards Denver on a remote state highway. This stretch was always desolate, rarely any traffic out this way. I was making good time and trucking along as I munched on some sandwiches and sipped hot tea from my thermos. Just me and the open road, the way I liked it. Up ahead, I noticed a car pulled over on the side of the road. As I got closer, I saw a man and a woman standing outside the car, staring at me intently. Something didn't feel right, so I decided not to stop and just kept on driving slowly past them. That's when things took a turn. Out of nowhere, the man and the woman both pulled out guns and started waving them aggressively at my truck. My heart dropped into my stomach. They were clearly trying to get me to stop. Adrenaline kicked in, and I slammed my foot on the accelerator. I wasn't about to stick around to find out what their intentions were. As I sped past their car, they opened fire, the bullets pinging against the side of my truck. I swerved, trying to get away from them, losing control of the massive rig. The truck jacked violently across the highway. I felt the trailer smash into the back of their car before toppling over onto its side. I braced for impact as the cab lurched over the embankment. Miraculously, I survived the crash without any major injuries, other than some bruises and cuts. With my pulse still racing, I scrambled out of the overturned truck and surveyed the scene. Their car was crushed under the collapsed trailer. There was no sign of the man and woman. They must have escaped into a getaway car that I didn't notice earlier. I shivered, wondering what they had planned for me if I had stopped. I hurried to the nearest call box, almost a half mile down the road, and phoned the police. An officer arrived shortly after, and I recounted the whole terrifying incident. He informed me that roadside attacks on truckers were on the rise in the area. They believed it was the work of a ruthless robbery ring targeting cargo trucks for their valuables. When additional police units arrived on the scene, they searched the area for the attackers, but found no trace of them. The damaged empty car apparently had been stolen. Whoever was behind this ambush had covered their tracks extremely well and vanished without a trace into the remote countryside. I gave my detailed statement answering questions late into the evening. The police said they'd update me if they uncovered any leads, but I'm not hopeful they'll ever find the perpetrators. In the weeks since, I still haven't been able to shake the chilling memories from that day. I drive on high alert now, uneasy about every vehicle that passes. Even a car on the shoulder makes my pulse quicken as I grip the wheel tightly. I've considered finding a new job after 30 years on the road, but trucking is in my blood and I don't know anything else. So for now, I carry on, cautious about making my deliveries but taking only well-traveled interstate routes, avoiding desolate back roads at all costs. Maybe one day, the police will catch the dangerous gang targeting drivers. Until then, I'm keeping both hands firmly on the wheel and stepping on the gas at the slightest sign of trouble. Call me paranoid, but I won't be caught off guard ever again. My co-workers call it nerves and say I'll get over it eventually, but they didn't experience the chilling evil in the eyes of those armed assailants. Roadside violence is the harsh reality of trucking these days, and I don't think I'll ever forget that afternoon. So, I check my locks twice when I park at truck stops and keep a loaded revolver by my side as I drive. If those outlaws come for me again, I'll be ready this time. My rig is my livelihood, and they aren't taking it without a fight. I know my wife wishes I'd find a safer job, maybe something local. She hates my long hauls, worried something will happen to me out on these desolate highways. I just tell her not to worry, that I can handle myself. But in truth, I worry about it too. Ever since the ambush, maybe one more year hauling freight and then I'll look for something closer to home. After 31 years of crisscrossing the country, I've had plenty of adventures and misadventures for one career. While I still love the freedom of the open road lately, 
It seems like unchecked danger lurks around every bend. I don't want to push my luck. The cowboys of the interstate have to ride off into the sunset eventually, and this tired trucker just might be ready for his final haul. Don't miss out on the bone-chilling thrills. Subscribe now and prepare to be haunted by the horrors that await. I was driving my truck through a busy city during a sunny afternoon, as I often do. The gentle sound of the engine was the only sound in the truck, and the busy streets stretched out before me. I was bored, and I knew I needed to find a place to park the truck and take a break. As I approached the truck stop, I noticed a man in an old sedan parked nearby. He was watching me intently, his eyes fixed on mine. At first I didn't think much of it, and assumed it was just another driver looking for a parking space. I parked my truck and headed toward a nearby cafe, hoping to grab a quick snack before finding a quiet place to rest. I was surprised to see the man from the sedan at the cafe, standing in the corner, watching me with an unemotional expression. As I wandered into the cafe, eating a sandwich and coffee, I couldn't shake the feeling that the man was following me. Whenever I looked in his direction, he would stare at me, his gaze distant and calm. A feeling of unease began to creep over me. I quickly paid for my meal and headed back to my truck. As I sat in the driver's seat, I saw the man from the sedan heading toward me. He had something in his hand, but I couldn't tell what it was. I closed the truck doors and prepared to leave. As I exited the truck parking lot, I noticed the man approaching the other vehicles, standing there and staring at the drivers. It was confusing, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. A few hours later, I was driving my truck in a different part of town when I saw the guy's old car again. It was parked on the side of the road, and the man was waving at me. I slowed down and rolled down my window. The man was holding a map and asked me for directions. I hesitated, but then noticed his sedan had a flat tire. He claimed that he had no reserve and no way to call for help. I felt some sympathy for his situation, and since I consider myself a good Samaritan, I decided to help him. I got out of my truck and started checking the flat tire. As I did so, I realized that the man was standing too close to me, invading my personal space. He kept asking weird questions, like where I was going and how long I'd been driving. I tried to distract him from his inquiries and focus on fixing the tire, but his presence continued to bother me. Suddenly, I heard a strange noise, a faint clicking sound coming from the man's pocket. I asked him about it, but he smiled and avoided the question. And here I noticed something even more disturbing. His eyes were completely black, as if they were devoid of a pupil or iris. I froze, overcome by an inexplicable feeling of fear and dread. As I tried to back away, the man lunged at me, waving a small, sharp object in his hand. I evaded him and got back into my truck, fumbling with the keys as I hurried in and locked the doors. The man kept walking towards me, his eyes locked on mine, and I could see the look of madness on his face. Finally, I succeeded in starting the truck's engine, drove away from it, and left it on the side of the road. I never met the man again, and I still don't know his true intentions and the mysterious thing he carried in his pocket. From New York City to Miami and all around, Sunday came to a close, and I hit the road for some social plans I had made for the upcoming weekend. Spent the weekend with friends in various parts of Florida, got dragged off to even more distant places. Typical weekend fun. It's late Sunday night, and I have to leave or I won't make it home in time for my thankfully late Monday afternoon start. I'm fully rested, I didn't consume any alcohol, and I stay away from drugs. On the interstate at about 3 a.m., in the middle of nowhere between Tampa and Orlando, not a soul in sight. I'm cruising along in the left lane simply because the road is empty. No headlights for the past hour, no taillights either. No streetlights either. It's dark, mildly drizzling and misty. I've got the music turned up, I'm in a good mood, everything's fine. And then I happen to glance to my left, and there's a cat meowing at me. A Siamese cat, in the passenger seat of a car, somewhat illuminated by the car's dashboard lights, and it's looking out of the window, meowing loudly. I get a good long look at it, because at first, my brain doesn't register. Police car dummy. 
I'm doing 90 plus in a 75, and I quickly have the oh no moment when the cat, the dashboard lights, the white Ford Fusion light bar all click in my brain after a second hard look. I step on the brakes and start slowing down rapidly but safely, intending to pull over. I even turn on my turn signal to switch lanes to the right for the pullover because, wait, there's no shoulder on the left side of this road. I look back to my left, where there's still no shoulder or room for another car, and it's just vanished. No sign of it. I slam on my brakes and come to a halt in the middle of the highway, activate all my emergency lights, and even scan the area with my handheld spotlight. There was nothing. No taillights, no headlights, no engine noises, nothing. There are no other tire marks in the damp road except mine, and I can see quite a distance in both directions. Nothing. My vehicle had excellent visibility and additional lighting. There's no way someone could have pulled off a trick let alone driven that fast on the wet, sloping grass and rocks on my left side. My mom used to tell me and my siblings this story when we were growing up, and it's always been a mystery.